this used to be my bedroom. Uh, it was destroyed during the post-election violence. I've changed it to be a garden where I grow uh, green vegetables. From these green vegetables, I feed my children, my family. Earlier on, people were telling me that soon after the elections, this house will not be mine again. So I was very much aware that something will happen in my life. It's only when uh, I moved out of the house, somebody called me and told me that they have demolished my house. They looted everything, even the materials that I, I had constructed with. Over 1,300 people were killed in the post-election violence in Kenya in 2007. Tens of thousands more, like Joshua, were displaced. These crimes have so far gone unpunished. But one man wants to change all that. I inform you in advance that at the end of the year, we present the cases to the judges. So we're planning to present at least two cases against two or three individuals. Who will be there? We don't know yet. That's why it's a good time for those who try to clarify their own situation to talk to us. During a five-day visit to Nairobi, Luis Moreno Campo left no stone unturned to get his message across. For example, by taking questions during a conference attended by a cross-section of 300 members of Kenyan society. My question is very simple. Under Article 58, uh, after you're done in the investigation, they can either request for a warrant of arrest, summons, or request the party to appear themselves. But the ICC prosecutor also wanted to hear from ordinary people what they expect from him. So he went off to visit a group of youths who documented the violence in their slum. He watched a DVD they made. and listened to an eight-year-old's message to him about the violence. And it is a result of all this that I realized that conflict runs beyond individuals, two persons to religion, ethnic groups, and even states. Who have you, who have you do this? Who have you to, to write this? Pardon? Who helped you to write this? My mother. Your mother? Wow, impressive. The more he heard, the more he was moved and Kenyans valued his interest. This is one of the stories that touched him most. After hearing about what happened here, Okampo realized that he couldn't restrict himself to just hunting down the big fish. He had to use his moral authority to help the ordinary victims too. The point for me I was trying to make in these last days is these people who lost the house, they don't need to wait for a court decision to, to be assisted. That for me is the main point. They don't need to wait. It's time to do it now. I think it's important to understand we will do our case, but it's not the only point in the agenda. The agenda has to be bigger, and then Kenyan cities have to do more for those victims.